Well, I injured my wrist. As you can see, it's a crazy story, actually. I was in a fist fight with like four or five dudes at the same time, and I was trying to rescue a woman from a burning building. I could hear her screaming for me, and you know, I was just laying them out one by one, just bang, bang, taking them out. She kept calling me her hero and saying I saved her life, and it's, it's a long story. I don't really want to get into it all, but no, the truth is I'm an idiot, and I was mixing concrete in a five-gallon bucket for a video we're gonna do pretty soon, and I was using a, a little wooden stick and tweaked my wrist, and ever since then, it's been killing me, so. I figured I would put the brace on for this one. All right guys, so today's video is one that I normally wouldn't do, but this is actually a buddy's gun that he left over here for a few days, and I wanna shoot this thing before I send it back, and I thought that I would go ahead and bring you guys along because this looks like it could be pretty fun. So this is actually the Rock Island Armory VR60 semi-automatic 12 gauge shotgun you can see it's got some interesting accessories probably stuff that i wouldn't put on here not the highest quality stuff but the reason i'm making this video is because i've actually seen these in gun shops like all over the place even places that don't typically sell the highest quality stuff and i would imagine millions and millions of people have probably come across these and wondered if it would be a good semi-automatic shotgun to buy so i believe the price tag on these is like five to six hundred bucks at the most which is incredibly inexpensive for a semi-automatic 12 gauge shotgun and we're going to find out if that translates into you know low quality and poor performance or if this thing would be well worth the low price tag let's do it all right so this is a magazine fed semi-automatic shotgun i believe it holds five plus one in the magazine and one of the main problems that you see with these semi-autos especially the cheap ones is that they won't run low powered ammo which is honestly the majority of what people shoot so we're going to start out just putting some different shotgun loads through this thing and see what it will actually run so we're going to start with the weakest stuff we got and just go up from there so this is a number eight shot 12 gauge target load i'll honestly be surprised if it cycles this I do like the AR-15 controls on a semi-auto shotgun. That's pretty cool. I've never shot one like this before. All right. Doesn't lock the bolt back, but it did cycle all five of those. It looks like the sight is really far to the right, so I got a hold to the left, but that actually felt pretty good. It didn't recoil very hard. Um, it felt smooth. You can feel the bolt obviously clunking around because it is so big and heavy, but it cycled that number eight shot, no problem. I'm impressed. All right, now we're gonna try some pheasant loads. These are number five shot. Obviously you can see high brass, quite a bit more powerful than the last ones. Let's see. Looks like the batteries are dying in this crappy optic. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> All right, so that one did lock the bolt back. So it's not the gun, it was just the ammo that didn't lock it back that first time. So I took that optic off, it was just getting in the way. So we're gonna try point shooting this thing with only the front sight. So should be interesting, but next up, we're gonna try some number four buckshot. This is like a proper self-defense load, so. Should be quite a bit more powerful. I don't know. Those pheasant loads were a huge jump up from the bird shot. So let's see. Front side only. Dang. Uh oh. Interesting. Malfunction on the last round. We'll go ahead and try to shoot it. I don't know if I'm hitting low or what. It's hard to tell, obviously. All right, so it cycled it and locked the bolt back as well. So it might've just been over gassed and slammed the bolt to the rear too hard. I'm not really sure, but that was our very first malfunction. What do you say? Let's try one of our homemade exploding slugs. If it don't shoot these, I don't want it. Make sure I got to aim in the right spot on this one. <laughs> Definitely worked. Interesting though, that it did not lock the bolt to the rear on that one. I have a feeling that the bolt with the really powerful loads might be outrunning the magazine spring because on the uh, number four buckshot, it looked like that round hadn't come up all the way to be fed into the chamber and the bolt was already, you know, halfway home. And again, 
we did not get a bolt lock on that super powerful shotgun slug. So I'm not an engineer, but it looks like it might be outrunning the magazine spring with the super powerful stuff. All right, let's see what kind of spread this thing has given us with some of these different loads back here at 10 yards away. We have a number eight bird shot, a number five pheasant shot, a number four buck shot, and a double lot buck shot. I got a multi bullseye paper target there, and I guess I'm just gonna aim a little high and to the left since we're point shooting with our front sight here. <laughs> Hopefully I hit him. Bird shot first. <laughs> Not too shabby, it cycled all of those and locked the bolt back no problem. Let's go check them out. Honestly, I think if you accessorize that thing correctly and put some decent stuff on there, it would make it 10 times better and probably be an all right shotgun. It doesn't help having junky red dots and foregrips and you really get what you pay for with that stuff. But here are our groups from 10 yards away. You can see our number eight bird shot right here on the first target and you can see it covered that whole 10 inch target or whatever it is uh, pretty well. We even had some that kind of flew off of the sides there, but for the most part, most of those pellets are in that target and then our number five pheasant load is right here and you can see the the holes from the pheasant load are definitely a little bit bigger than our number eight shot but once again that one covered that target pretty much perfectly with not as many strays as the number eight shot and then our number four buck shot is down here and i don't know if i put that one low or if that round is just hitting low uh, but it definitely went lower than all the others and once again pretty big group i would say that's one of the bigger groups for sure we even have some all the way down here on our very bottom target um, but not a bad spread at 10 yards and then our double lot buck shot right here is definitely the tightest of them all and you can see all of those pellets i believe it's nine pellets are right there within a four or five inch group. So a lot of people don't realize how small a shotgun spread really is at 10 yards away. If you think about this, this is probably a further shot than anyone's gonna have inside of their house. And that double lot buck shot is only a four or five inch spread. So keep that in mind. Shotguns and watermelons are always a good combination. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Look at it raining watermelon juice. That is incredible. <laughs> There's nothing like a 12 gauge shotgun to take out a watermelon. All right guys, well there you have it. Just a short video on the Rock Island Armory VR60. So give you one more look at it. It's actually a pretty cool looking gun. I gotta say, I've seen this thing several times, like I said, um, and it's you know obviously on the lower end of the price spectrum, but like I said earlier, if you accessorize this thing correctly, you could actually turn it into a fairly decent gun, and I would say it worked pretty well in this video. So if you want something to come out, you know, have a, a fun semi-auto 12 gauge to shoot on the range, I think it would work very well for that. Now, obviously it's not a Benelli M4 or, you know, some really high-end semi-automatic, like combat ready shotgun. I wouldn't say it's in that category, but not everyone is looking to spend several thousand dollars and get the best of the best. So overall, I had fun with it. I think it's a pretty cool gun. Let me know in the comments what your experience has been with these. I'm sure a lot of people have had mixed reviews on them, but I'd be glad to hear from you guys as always, and I appreciate you watching this video. If you like this video, guys, please hit that like button for me. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.